from this uh, conference about uh, the ephemeral disease. When I, uh, when I first thought about preparing for this uh, uh, talk, uh, there's so much to say about the ephemeral disease, either open, uh, endovascular, like as Dr. Mamun said, uh, hybrid uh, procedure which is coming up pretty fast. There's a lot to talk about in these segments, so I'll try to be precise and try to tackle the endovascular management of the ileofemoral disease. There'll be a lot of uh, slides in common with Dr. Mamun's presentation. Um, so this is a case from last week. Yeah, I'll start with that. It has a lot of uh, uh, points about uh, iliac and femoral uh, disease. Uh, this patient presented uh, with uh, bilateral feet thrust pain. He has a long history of smoking. He has no patentable femoral pulses. Uh, a CTA was done, which showed the collusion of the left common iliac, a CTO of the right external iliac, and a CDO of the right SFA. So a combination of different things. Uh, he's very symptomatic, he doesn't sleep at night, and so the next management was, uh, he was this, this patient was in the public sector, um, and the next management he was in the list for uh, angiogram. Started the procedure with ultrasound-guided uh, access, and I do believe in ultrasound-guided access to uh, uh, decrease the risk of groin hematoma, pseudoaneurysm, and other uh, access uh, problems. Afterwards, uh, this is, I'm gonna go through some of the slides, and uh, so that's the first angiogram. So ultrasound guided access. Uh, I put a, a short six French sheet in the left groin at the beginning, uh, and I crossed that uh, left common iliac. And I don't know if you can um, see the left common iliac had a near occlusion, and since a near occlusion, you can't really, once the pigtail was put in, it's a five French pigtail, you could not really see the external iliac or the common femoral. I'll play a little bit of that play again if you want to take another look at it. So again, that's done. Afterwards, after crossing the left arm iliac, I put the sheet up, up and over. And this is a picture of uh, showing the rotisana iliac, which is included internal iliac, feeding the profunda, feeding other branches, and filling up the right common femoral artery. And in the next slide, I will show how we cross the rock cell iliac. We, we didn't use a lot of force in crossing it. I just let the wire and the catheter kind of do the work without pushing or pulling. And that's an important step that you, uh, you will appreciate later on as the presentation ends. So that's uh, the wire slowly making its way. My support catheter is actually following it. The wire did not loop, but obviously it's, uh, it turns. <laughs> And here it's kind of like easy, that's going down with no resistance at all. I fold my catheter down and I want to make sure I can enter into the common femoral artery. Fold the wire out. And there you go, we're interluminal and interluminal in the rod common femoral. So that's the picture at the beginning. Uh, I can't say if it's a SFA is open or not, but there's no continuous line. There's a profunda there. I took another uh, angle. I kind of like splayed out the uh, profunda from the SFA. And the SFA is filling distally there. There you go. It goes all the way. So afterwards, that's uh, the hard part. You can see a small knob there uh, between the profunda and the SFA. Uh, we crossed it with a wire and a catheter. And then uh, did a uh, pre-dilatation of the SFA itself, and then a drug coated balloon was used for this guy. You can see the wire there. I always try to verify the entry. You can see the verifying the entry there and using a couple of pre-dilatation balloon followed by drug-coated balloon. Um, afterwards, we still have to do the external ELA, which is a CTO. And that's a stent, so expanding stent was used. And this is after we deployed it. 
you can see the very nice inflow there. But something happened in the last tangigram. Here it's okay, did minor dilatation and there you go. So, uh, what should we do next and options while we think about that? I just want to talk in short about balloon expandable and self-expandable stents. So the advantages of balloon expandable stents is increase radial strength, increase precision and accuracy of placement, and can be expanded beyond nominal diameter, although they do uh, foreshorten when you overextend them. It has decreased recoil and balloon expandable cover stents are superior in certain classifications, especially task C and B classification, where there's circumferential calcium and you think that um, artery could rupture at any minute. This advantage is non tailorable it's one diameter of the entire length. It has higher forces on fragile vessels like the external iliac, and balloon expandable stents tend to dissect a little bit better, more. It has more rigid and less conformable to the uh, artery itself. Let's use them. Uh, and self-expanding stents, which I use in the external iliac, uh, again, you can oversize up front with less risk, meaning the reference vessel diameter, you can always uh, overexpand over it. Uh, it's excellent for lesions of different diameters. It's conformable, it's less traumatic to the vessel wall and more flexible and conformable, and less likely to compromise side branches because um, uh, the stent struts are, uh, are larger. Disadvantages, it has decreased radial strength, more recoil, less precision deployment, it tends to foreshorten and sometimes it may jump a little bit if you're not in control. It can be expanded beyond, uh, uh, beyond the nominal uh, uh, diameter up front, not uh, afterwards, and has less scaffolding. The ends of the stent itself has more recoil and decreased strength. I want to talk about uh, drug-coated balloons in the SFA region. Uh, uh, a lot of studies are there uh, from Metronic to Impact, the Sterilex, and the Bard, the Botonics. All these balloons are uh, FDA approved. The Biotronic, uh, the Cook Advance, all these has a CE mark, but still pending. The Impact, the study was uh, done in the, uh, Europe and uh, SFA and uh, it has robust uh, level one evidence. It's a prospective uh, two-phase multicenter, randomized and single-blinded. Um, so it's uh, uh, the durability subjects were pulled up to five years. The published uh, is uh, one year data and the two year data and the five year data is coming up. So it shows a primary patency result through the two years. That's comparing the DCB and regular balloon. It's about uh, 78% versus 50% two years out. Uh, the uh, primary vacancy in two years, as you said, it's about between 70 and 80, uh, early 80s versus the uh, in diabetics versus non-diabetics. So even in diabetics, it does work. Um, the gender sub-analysis is the same. It's closely. And there is an impact global after getting the FDA approval. They followed up in from 12 months. That's real life experience. Uh, and it shows the same thing, basically. Um, it's uh, the patient in the impact SFA trial was 300 in the impact global registry, it's about 15,000 plus. And basically, um, even in different lesion length, it really showed that DCB really works in the SFA region. That's impact global and long lesion, more than 15 centimeter, and it's about also 80% uh, um, um, over one year. Same thing. So the Levon 2 study, which is the tonic study, is another FDA-approved balloon. It basically shows the same thing about pre-dilatation and post-dilatation. They're comparing it, but all these data shows basically that drug-coated balloon does work in the SFA region. It does work in short lesion and long lesion. Obviously, the patency, the primary patency, which is the most important thing, and the wound healing uh, is another measure to look at it. Uh, but it does work and also with, uh, give Roughly the same number, which is 80% um, uh, two years uh, out in drug coated balloon. Illuminate is another trial for Sterilex balloon. <clears throat> Basically, all these studies uh, concur that drug coated balloon uh, um, does work in the SFA. Uh, the result uh, it's a level one evidence and impact SFA and the one two trial. And DCP is the first line therapy in the FIMPOP area. And despite the new ongoing studies, long-term follow-up are still required. 
There's other techniques, as Dr. Mahmoud said, about through and through access, phalangeplasty. Brachial artery access is very helpful in the iliofemoral region, especially if the patient had previous kissing iliac stent or aortic bypass bypass, or the lesion itself is you cannot cross it from, from below. Out back or pioneer catheter, the pioneer catheter, uh, it's a catheter that has an ibis at the end of it, so it kind of directs uh, your needle where the re-entry is. Uh, that's endovascular techniques in test 2, C, and D. Uh, this is kind of a covered stent for the aorta and the iliac, it's not available. And that's task classification, transatlantic and society classification for the iliofemoral region. Obviously, task A and B are, are easier to deal with endovascular. Task C and D, you were push, uh, pushing the envelope. Uh, we do try endovascular first technique. The fin pop area, uh, the same thing. There's another task classification for it. And as you go from A to D, it becomes more complex. So going back to our patients, uh, so what's our options here? Um, so we're very limited in the on-shelf devices that's available for us to take care of the situation. But in my mind, I thought we either use occlusion balloon, cover stent, and can always do surgery for these guys. So in our patient, um, after we did the angiogram and realized what happened, um, the patient already was on monitor. This is uh, showing the perf. <coughs> this is the occlusion balloon that I used, and uh, I'm here verifying that there's no more uh, leakage. So now um, I deflated the balloon. I left the balloon up for about three minutes, and you can see here that the perf is gone. Uh, I'm still worried about this patient, uh, so I have a uh, couple of things I need to answer to myself here for this patient. The balloon control the bleeding for now, but I really need to put him on the antiplate, especially for the SFA region. The patient control uh, blood pressure is uh, stable, so I still have time to uh, do this and bail out uh, endovascular bailout. Uh, the available uh, cover stent is a wall graft, and the wall graft uh, needs a bigger size sheet. It needs a 10 front sheet. The problem is, it's not, it's, there's no tinfer sheet available at this point. Uh, and then uh, I'm thinking about it, there's issue still with the growing closure. If I put a tinfer sheet and ask for pressure, especially the patient is still heparinized, I still have an SFA lesion that I just crossed and ballooned. Uh, I really do need to do antiplatelets. And uh, uh, what if something happened in the middle of the night and that uh, patient triplet again from uh, under reason? And I still have still to do the lithium iliac artery stent. Uh, another thing is because there's only one pair close available on the shelf at this point. So what I did, I did a pre-closure technique for the groin, which is deploying the pair close ahead of uh, getting your bigger sheet in. This is the pair close going in. And we're gonna deploy it and then we'll put a seven French sheet in. And what I decided to do is to, to deploy the wall graft uh, bareback, uh, meaning sheetless. It's got the suture. It's like putting the poorly in sutures uh, inside the vessel itself. <coughs> The wire itself is the same wire I used to cross the SFA, so it's kind of beaten up. So it will take some time to put that wire in the in the pair close. So after I put the wire in, I got the seven French sheep in. Uh, I got the big tail up and over, get the wire there, and I, uh, we got the wall graft, the cover uh, stent graft there. Here I'm just waiting for the uh, sheet to go in. And that's the sheet going in. 
So that kind of looked pretty close with him. And that's something that can shift here. And then you can see here that uh, uh, proline suture has not been pulled up. So. That's the common iliac, uh, which we uh, to tackle the common iliac uh, lesion, and that's after deployment. You can still that there is not a bleeding at this point. And this is the wall graft itself, uh, putting it in the middle <laughs> and deploying it where the previous perk was. So the iliac lesion can be uh, can be easy to do, but they're not forgiving when something happens. Uh, uh, it's really not forgiving. So it becomes a life-saving measure more than a limb-saving measure. After that, I remove uh, the sheath when we concluded the procedure and try to close it with just one pair close. Uh, I kept the wire in uh, just in case if uh, the pair close does not work. I can always uh, put the uh, six pen sheet in uh, and then hold pressure afterwards. But in this situation, it actually worked very well, pretty well. <clears throat> Here I'm locking the suture. So I thought that was uh, a good thing to review the heliofemoral region. Thank you.